Carl, they are nuts for their Buckeyes here in Columbus, and why not? They've got the second-ranked team in the nation, led by their outstanding sophomore, big man Jared Sullinger, and look who's in town, undefeated and fourth-ranked Duke. Welcome to a heavyweight matchup here in the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Value City Arena is rocking right now as the Buckeyes get set to take on the Blue Devils. And look who's here to take in the game among others, LeBron James in Buckeye Red and his buddy D-Wade. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Dan Shulman and Dick Vitale. This place is unbelievable right now. A great early season to match up. An outstanding test for both of these teams. Well, a real test. When you look at Ohio State, they need a test big time. So far, they've had one real opponent. Florida, it's been Cupcake City. On the other side, Duke has been tested. Beat Tennessee, Michigan, and Kansas in three battles out in Maui. And right now, this matchup will tell us a lot, I think, about Ohio State. Let's take a look now at our one-on-one. -on -one. We begin by looking at the freshman for the Duke Blue Devils, Austin Rivers. Well, Austin Rivers came in, so heralded the son of Doc Rivers. He's had a solid year. He was a diaper dandy for me of the week with his performance out in Maui. I was in 14 a game and could shoot the three. On the other side, Jared Sullinger, my preseason choice as the player of the year. Mobile, very physical. He can really score in a variety of ways, and he gets to the free throw line, which could spell trouble for the inside players of Duke. A look at the starting lineups right now for the Blue Devils. Curry, Rivers, and Dawkins in the backcourt. Ryan Kelly, Mason Plumley up front for Ohio State. Aaron Kraft, their outstanding sophomore point guard. Lenzel Smith Jr., senior William Buford, and then Deshaun Thomas and Jaron Soldier. I'll tell you, Dick, this may be a, a quote-unquote football school, and they had some huge news yesterday, but this place is excited about basketball right now. Well, it's the nut house, and all the Goliaths in sports are here. You saw the King, Mr. James, and you saw Dwayne. I'll tell you, I think they're the best tandem in the NBA as a one-two punch. They're going to redo the jump and reset the clock to 20 minutes. Mike Kitts, Ted Valentine, Terry Weimer, our officials tonight. The last time Duke was in Columbus, was 1964. They haven't met anywhere since 2002. You weren't even living. <laughs> You're right. Uh, I was. <laughs> I was 25. Kraft, a nice entry feed. Sullinger on the inside of a travel. Kraft is really a key player. Why? Because of his defensive effort. He puts a lot of pressure on the basketball, and they're concerned about him. Mike Krzyzewski told us before the game, we're concerned about the pressure of Kraft on Curry on that perimeter. One of the great on-ball defenders in America, Aaron Kraft. Three-guard look for Duke. Rivers, some heavy pressure on him, and a five-second call. But then he get a timeout call. Excuse me, called a timeout to avoid the five-second call. So a great first defensive possession for Ohio State. And we'll step aside for a moment during the timeout. How could switchgrass in Argentina change engineering in Dubai? Aluminum production in South Africa and the aerospace industry in the U.S.? At T. Rowe Price, we understand the connections of a complex global economy. It's just one reason over 75% of our mutual funds beat their 10-year Lipper average. T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a prospectus or summary prospectus with investment information, risks, fees, and expenses to read and consider carefully before investing. Back in Columbus, just underway after the early Duke timeout. Ohio State 6-0 on the season. Every single game they've played right here in this building. Duke has been tested much more, as Dick mentioned, playing on the road, playing uh, neutral court games, but playing some very good teams in Maui. Mike Krzyzewski, of course, earlier this season, becoming the all-time wins leader, number 903, in that game against Michigan State. So the Blue Devils have had a much more rugged schedule so far. Well, that Mattis club has not left Columbus yet. Yep. First seven games right here on their own floor. Their first road game will be at Kansas on December the 10th. 
Sullinger with the left hand won't stay down. The rebound to Ryan Kelly. Kelly's really been playing outstanding inside, outside. He was the MVP in the Maui Classic. Scored 17 points in all three games. Rivers off the bounce. Plumley the follow. Twice it won't stay down. And the rebound finally down to the Buckeyes. Mike Krzyzewski saying before the game, Mason Plumley and Ryan Kelly are just continuing to grow on almost a weekly basis. Sean Thomas can't get the shot off and Kraft will reset. Nice backdoor look. Reverse layup, no good. By Buford and back come the Blue Devils. Hey, Buford, a key player, can make the perimeter shot. Has a chance to be the all-time leading scorer in the history of Ohio State. He'd have to get really hot and they'd have to have a deep run, but he could certainly wind up in the top three or four fairly easily. Kelly on the drive. Misses rebound to Sullinger, who last year as a freshman averaged a double-double. Better than 17 points, 10 rebounds you per know, game. You know, Dan, early in the game, we're seeing some tough defense. Kraft for three. I tell you what, he starts making that three. Because prior to that, he's been a one-dimensional player. Great defense and a good handler. But now he's at ball handling, shooting. A steal by Smith. Buford. Buford can finish from out of Toledo, Ohio. They've had some great players in Toledo, including Jimmy Jackson, who played here. Kraft is a solid player. He's a winner. Like quarterback in football. Mason Plumley jump hook. No. What a great start for the Buckeyes. And this crowd is in a frenzy in the early going. Well, they're feeling off the emotion of the crowd. Kraft with a drive. Seven to nothing, Ohio State. Okay, it's a touchdown. They're up a touchdown. Kraft really looks impressive. He was out here working out before the game, working on his shot. He was a valedictorian in high school. 3-9 GPA wants to be a surgeon. Oh, he got to make that layup. He nonchalanted him, went to the goal, didn't finish with authority. Thomas, nice feed. Buford with the layup. Oh, get a T.O., baby. Get a T.O. Here in Columbus, Mike Krzyzewski using another timeout. Ohio State Dick scoring nine points in the last minute and nine seconds. I'll tell you the reason the heady play utilizing the screen really well there. Sullinger's big screen. Kraft knocks down the open three. Mike Krzyzewski's gone to his bench. Austin Rivers sits down. Tyler Thornton, who hit the two big threes in the win in Maui over Kansas, is into the game at the point. He hit two threes, as you said, in the last minute of the game. One with 20 seconds. Seth Curry misses the three. He wanted a foul call, did not get it, and back come the Buckeyes. Hey, one thing, if you play against Duke, you better control and contain the three-point shooting. Shooting 46% as a team. Thomas misses the three for Ohio State. Long rebound, and Kraft just out-hustled everybody for the basketball. He's been the star of stars yeah. so far early in the game. Sullinger surrounded, muscles it up and in. Physical, tough inside, much more mobile, lost some weight. This Ohio State team is ready to play, man. The Nuthouse is ready to cheer. There's an unbelievable explosion here. Plumley with a jump hook, and finally, four minutes into the game, Duke is on the board. He has really become a much more complete offensive player, utilizing the jump hook inside. Rebounds, block shots, getting better and better, more confidence in his offensive game. Smith, and he traveled. We have a timeout on the floor. What a start for the Buckeyes, up nine already, Dick. Take a look right here. We're going to watch him go inside. We're going to bring it down to the big guy. Mr. Sullivan is going to show you that great strength. That's just pure physical toughness. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's and in part by Lincoln. Get more than you wished for at the Wishlist events. And Carabas. This holiday, purchase $100 in Carabas gift cards and get a $20 Amore bonus card. An awfully tough ticket tonight here in Columbus. Value City Arena is filled to the rafters with a great start for the Buckeyes in front of a lot of former stars of the Ohio State basketball program. Michael Red, Daquan Cook, Mike Conley, 
Evan Turner, Greg Oden. Pretty good starting five, huh? Exactly. That's a good <laughs> starting five right there. Wow. They've had some success, though, under Thad Mata. You think about winning three outright Big Ten titles. They shared one as well. You think about a final game in the NCAA tournament, Sweet 16. I mean, it's unbelievable what he's achieved here. And you talk about teams that can reload on an annual basis. A tremendous recruiter lost some very good players. David Lighty, John Diebler, Dallas Lauderdale. Only four contributors, really, from last year back this year. They're all great players. It's a young team, and he's not quite sure, Coach Mata, yet quite how deep of a team it is. But, boy, they have played well in the first five minutes of this game. They got a good chance of getting another player added to the mix. Look, Whitten Ross, he may be eligible December 9th. Sullinger with a mismatch on him. Over Dawkins off the window and good. He's getting the ball too easy inside. you got to challenge him a little bit more than that. He's got good touch, played for his dad at Northland High School. Was a teammate at Trey Burke of Michigan, who, by the way, what about stock up for Virginia yep. they win for Tony Bennett Sullinger by the way shooting 63 percent from the field so far this season Plumley with a nice look to Curry who gets into the lane and drops in the teardrop Curry's got to give him some ball handling and score and he's certainly capable can flat out shoot the three he's trying to play more of a role like John Shire did point guard not yet to the level of what Shire was able to do in his senior year. Jordan Seibert, number two into the game for Ohio State, a sophomore out of Cincinnati. Buford, nice shot fake, step in, let it fly. A little bit strong, rebound Thornton. He made four threes in a row in the last game against Valparaiso. Thornton, a real energy guy, not known as an offensive player, but made the two huge threes to help them beat Kansas, the second of which really a desperation shot with the shot clock running down. Plumley inside scores over Sullinger. Nice move by Plumley. Utilizes either hand, right and left hand. Junior having a solid year. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about losing players. You mentioned about losing Lighty. You know. What about losing Nolan Smith, Kyle Sittler, and Kyrie Irving? Plumley coming into the game averaging better than 11 points per game and 10 rebounds per game. And a match of the big guys that doubling up on Sullinger. That'll leave Kraft open. He'll miss the three, and Mason Plumley rips down another rebound. Well, their philosophy right there. We're going to double up on the post, and we're going to make Kraft have to make that shot. He made one early. Really putting pressure on the deep ball. They are really challenging the three-point shooters to do. Not allowing them to spot up. Watch Plumley inside, working a little one-on-one. He's a big guy. I got some strength too. One of three brothers on the team. Marshall's a freshman, likely will redshirt. Mason goes to the bench. Big brother Miles comes in to take his place. Also into the game. Rivers is back in there along with Josh Hairston. Rivers right to the rim. Count the basket and a foul. That's a big time move. That'll get a smile out of the face. A guy like Wade. That's a Wade kind of play. Watch his change of direction. Great front change. Protects the ball really well. Watch his change, people. Low and fast. Great step to the goal, utilizes the left hand. His dad was a terrific defensive player. Went to Marquette, Doc. But Doc didn't have the offensive skills of his son. Three-point play for Austin Rivers. Lenzel Smith back into the game and out for Ohio State. Cybert will sit down. There's Doc, who with the NBA out of commission right now. He's been everywhere. He's been in New York. He's been in Hawaii. He's here in Columbus. But Doc will be getting back to work soon enough. Tell you one thing, he does a terrific job on the sideline. Great personality. Was also a really, I thought, an outstanding TV analyst. Thornton on the floor, but the ball pops free to the Buckeyes. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Sullinger, good hands by Rivers to knock it away. And now the Blue Devils have it. They're going to need Rivers to score to win this game. He's got a little bounce to him. He's not going to back down from anybody, I'll tell you that. 7-0 run Blue Devils to get back into the game. Rivers for three. That's a big-time score. He's got range. People have not yet seen. I'm telling you, I watched him last year in a high school tournament. I was in awe of his offensive ability. The lead is down to one all of a sudden. Sullinger for three. Don't let him shoot that shot. Duke will allow him to go out to the perimeter and shoot that shot. The one thing they're doing, 
Ohio State. They're challenging the Duke three-point shooters. Sellinger, by the way, has made two threes this season. That was his seventh attempt. Curry using the screen. He'll pull up for three. And the rebound down to Ohio State. It was nine to nothing early for Ohio State. And Duke is right back in the game. Buford with a feathery touch buries the three. They got to get him looks. He can flat out score. He can score the ball, as they said. Needs 550 points to become the all time leading scorer in the history of Buckeye basketball. Dennis Hobson with that mark right now. Thornton takes the handoff. Back to Miles Plumley. Count the basket. It's a block on Ravenel as well. Nice two man play. Good look by four in. His first team second. An active play by Miles Plumley. The well, handoff and the big guy going right to the rim, Dick. Yeah, he releases, goes right to the goal. Nobody steps out. Tay Doc's son certainly gave him a big lift. That's the trifecta, baby. Duke down 11 to nothing early. Now back in a trailing 16 to 14 here in the first half in Columbus. Let's take a look at how Duke has built its program. Brought to you by Sears, 32nd season for the Hall of Fame coach Mike Shashevsky. Wow. Take a look at those numbers. Unbelievable. I think about Mike Shashevsky. You think about all those wins, 907, but four national titles, 12 times he's been national coach of the year, 27 NCAA Burks, 12 ACC regular season titles, 13 tournament titles. Are you kidding me? A resume of he's got the gold medal with Mr. LeBron James and company. And LeBron's dressed up in his Ohio State That's colors right. today. He tweeted that he's rooting for the Buckeyes for tonight. The Buckeyes. Well, he's from Akron. Yep. I don't know if D Wade is uh, is rooting for Duke. He's got a little more blue and black on. Maybe he's going for Duke tonight. Tell you one thing, Greg Paulus is going for the yeah. Buckeyes now. He knows where he makes his living. Yeah, Greg Paulus, the former point guard for Duke, is now on the staff with Ohio State. He's the video coordinator for the Buckeyes. I know we had a chance to talk to him before the game. Still a very young man. You think at some point he's going to be a big time coach, right? Absolutely. Yeah. He's got the whole package. Very competitive. I also think, can I make this production? I'm not Mr. Van Gundy, but I'm going to tell you this. Miami's going to win it all. They're going to find a center to join those two, and they're going to win it all this year. The season will begin Christmas Day. Evan Ravenel, too strong on the jumper, battle for the rebound. And it's down to Dawkins. Into the point now for Duke. Freshman Quinn Cook out of Bowie, Maryland. So Cook and Rivers an all freshman backcourt right now for the Blue Devils. You know, Cook, good handler, had knee surgery in high school. Dawkins misses a 15-footer. Ravenel down with a rebound for Ohio State. He's a big body, a junior out of Tampa. He's a transfer out of Boston College. Nice, nice look. Pass. Great look inside. Great play. Soldier could finish. He has the great touch and the body. The unbelievable strength. Take a look right here. We're going to watch that nice diagonal pass. And there's the catch and the finish. And he really has great balance to be able to avoid the charge. I love him. He's a, he's a special kid. I was honored at a banquet along with him, Dan. I'm going to tell you, his family and the way he carried himself, class yep. personified. That's the Wayman Tisdale Award, right? Yeah, he got the Wayman yep. Tisdale Best Freshman of the Year. And Thad Mata said yesterday, and he said often, that Sullinger told him right away when he got here last year that Coach, uh, his intent was to stay for two years, never really seriously considered going to the NBA after his freshman season. You can see when you watch him interact with his teammates how much fun he's having being a student athlete. Well, so he's a great mom and dad, really loving, sat with them for hours at that bank and was so impressed with their relationship with their son. Rivers, the kick. Kelly steps in, too strong. And Mason Plumley called for the foul, his first. These are two quality basketball teams. Mm -hmm. Really quality. Last night I watched a little quality too as well, watching Xavier. Xavier and Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's going to be a different team when they get Azealy in their lineup. But I'm going to tell you, this kid, Chu Holloway, have you seen it? Yes, I oh, watched last man. night. Yep. You talk about clutch at the end, those two big threes. Yep. Overtime win on the road for Xavier last night. Kraft gets by Cook and then stripped just before he went up to the basket. Why well, he was hesitating. Should have shot it quickly. He was looking to pass. Mason Plumley. He hesitated. Yeah. Still got the jam. Crowd wanted to travel. I wanted to travel, but I thought he kept his pivot good down. Don Monter doesn't feel that way. 
Duke back within one after trailing 11 to nothing to begin the game. One thing about the Duke kids, Stan Mount and I were talking about it. They are never, ever going to play a game where they don't play hard. They always reflect their coach's personality, play with intensity. Great look right here now. There's the great look. Hesitates, sets, and there's the jam. Buford draws the foul at the other end. It goes on Rivers, his first. Tomorrow night, the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods continues with two games on ESPN at 7.30 Eastern. It's Florida State and Michigan State. And then at 9.30 Eastern, another top ten matchup. Number seven, Wisconsin. Number five, North Carolina. The Tar Heels trying to bounce back from their defeat to UNLV. What a game that was. Tell you, UNLV shot the three really well, made 13 threes. I think Dave Rice is going to build something special. But North Carolina should have a chip on their shoulder. They did not defend. They got to do a better job of defending. It starts out at that point. Marshall's got to do a job defending rather than just concentrating on passing. Mason Plumley calling for the ball one on one with Sollinger, and he stepped out of bounds. I love Marshall's passing ability, but you got to be able to do more than just be one dimensional. You got to guard and guard people. It becomes contagious, and that's what Kraft does well. Yep. Dan Schulman and Dick Vitale with you here in Columbus. Duke and Ohio State, two top five unbeaten teams. Duke 7-0, Ohio State 6-0. You know, after that game in Wisconsin, North Carolina's going to go to Lexington, Kentucky mm -hmm. to play number one in America. Where we will be Thursday night when St. John's comes to town. They got the longest win streak. John Calabria has not lost at home since coaching at Kentucky. Sullinger again, some help by Curry. Now he backs off. Sullinger forces it up. And Ted Valentine's got a foul call on Mason Plumley. That will be his second. See, that was a big concern. A big concern of Mike Krzyzewski. He will get calls down there because of his unbelievable reputation, his ability to challenge people off the bounce. He challenges you. He gets to the free throw. He's averaging eight free throws a game in limited minutes. And the signal made by Ted Valentine was that Plumley brought his arms down, did not keep, it, keep his arms straight up, and made the contact with Sullinger. So Mason, MP2, as they call him, sits down. Miles, MP1, the oldest, the senior, comes in to take his younger brother's place. You know, I know one thing. All these players love this big stage. They love the lights. Teddy Valentine likes it as well. We saw him strut before the game. He's doing a little dance. The lead grows to five for the Buckeyes. Ravenel back into the game. Sullinger's going to get a breather. He won't be out long. Maybe just until the under eight media timeout and then right back in. It's so terrific when you coach a kid that's quality in every way. And he's your best player. It becomes reflective to everybody on the team. Rivers somehow got through the defense but missed the scoop. He was a big time scorer in high school up in the Orlando area with the Park High School. Boy, he can get to the rim, can he? He can really get to the rim. Thomas. Foul is good. Cybert up above everybody else for the tip in. Cybert with a great bounce. Thomas is a guy that can give him points. He was a big time, the third all time leading scorer in the history of Indiana basketball. Now a turnover. Buford with the finish. I think he's one of America's premier players. He happens to be a little bit in the shadow, certainly of Sullinger. But he is a terrific wing player. Can hurt you with the three, can hurt you off the bounce. A game of runs, and it's Ohio State on an 8 to nothing run right now. Tell you what, it's a lot of fun. Offensive foul, Seth Curry. Timeout on the floor. Bedlam wow. in Columbus. Wow. Wow. Thomas the miss. Seibert the follow. Buford then following up on the next play, going coast to coast for the lay in. And the Buckeyes have a nine point lead on the Blue Devils. He's cheerleading, too. He's a cheerleader. Mr. Sullinger does it all. Let me introduce to you our head football coach, Urban Meyer. <laughs> Big news yesterday here in Columbus, Urban Meyer, who had been with us last little while at ESPN, back to the coaching. 
After winning a couple of national titles in Florida, he is now the new head man here in Columbus at the Ohio State University. Hey, one thing, Dan, I told you and Kurt Herbstreit before the game, my son-in-law played for him a little bit at Notre Dame, and the first time when he played under him, he told me, he said, this guy's going to be a winner. He was an assistant quarterback coach at Notre Dame. My son-in-law, Thomas Crew, played under him and just raved about him. He will win big here. And it is being reported, as uh, baseball fans have seen, Gordon Eats of ESPNBoston.com is on our website and elsewhere reporting that my friend Bobby Valentine wow. is back in the business again as the manager of the Boston Red Sox. So congratulations to Bobby. I will miss him in the booth, but if what's being reported is true, congratulations. He'll do a great job in Boston. I want to say congratulations. He'll bring a lot of enthusiasm and discipline, and maybe I could get a job sitting next to you in baseball. Uh, send me your resume. I'll have my people get back to you. I love baseball. I know you do. I love baseball. <laughs> I'm going to call Barbie Wimson. I said, Barbie, how about you baseball with that shit? You think you and I can work together? Of the year round. Wow, that was a lot of fun. Rivers to the rim again. Does he get scoring ability? I mean, he has really got legitimate big time scoring ability. The Cameron crazies are going to love him. Mason Plumley back into the game, playing with two fouls. Seven minutes to go, first half. Deflected, still Ohio State ball. I agree with that. I think a lot of times coaches are afraid of the third, and by the time the guy you bring him back in, the game is over. You got to play him right now. You're down nine. Kraft really plays under control. Told me they didn't recruit him initially until after he had decommitted from Tennessee. You talk about the work ethic, you're right. First one in the gym taking a ton of extra shots. Very vocal at practice, great leadership. And it doesn't hurt to have the big guy to give the ball to as well. Hey, you've got a guy like that inside. Remember this, basketball efficiency starts offensively and defensively in the lane. And no one has it better than Jared Sullinger. Already 10 points for Sullinger. A travel to call on Curry. Sixth Duke turnover. You know, he always play basketball. A little two-man game. They try to double up on the ball, and then he just does the rest. He does a phenomenal job sealing the defense and protecting the basketball. Ryan Kelly back into the game. Dick averaging better than 14 a game. You mentioned the Maui MVP. He has yet to score in this game. Thomas with a floater right over him, and the lead grows to 13. If he gives them the score and they're anticipating, that elevates that team. He was the third all-time leading scorer in the history of scholastic basketball in Indiana. Number one, Damon Bailey. Sophomore out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. A streaky shooter. Plumley sheds Sullinger and slams it home. Uh, Duke's got size. When you look at Kelly, the two Plumleys. That hasn't really been easy for them. I mean, they had the Belmont game. They won by one. They really had challenges out it, but they always found a way to win. I tell you, this kid's elevating his game from what we saw last year. Proud. Shots coming around the last couple of games. Finley High School, he was a star quarterback yep. in high school as well. How about an assist to turnover ratio of 3-1 to one so far this season? That's an area that Doc Rivers' son has to work on. Deflected, stolen away. He's on the negative side, his sister turnovers Rivers. Thomas, Seibert, and Kelly with a rebound. They got to get Kelly some shots. He averages, you said earlier about his MVP, 17 a game, and now he has blank right now. Look at Rivers with the stop and go, and oh, somehow no. gets it up and in off the glass. He's bringing some smiles to the faces of LeBron and Mr. Wade. They know they're going to see this kid down the road. I remember you calling me last year saying, I'm in a car on the way down. I think it was Fort Myers. You went to go yeah. see him play in a yeah. tournament, right? I did. Yeah. What about this? His sophomore year in high school, he put 40 against John Wall wow. in a high school game. John Wall might have got 50, but he got <laughs> Eufer, tipped up and in by Sullinger. Sullinger really dominating inside, scoring very effectively. They're a good basketball team, man. They are a good basketball team. Rivers, just constant motion. What a crossover. Count the basket and a foul. Are you serious? 
Are you serious for watching that driving ability of that diaper dandy? Watch this diaper dandy put the ball to the deck and get to the goal. Very low and fast, protects the ball. Defense didn't rotate over. That's a block. First foul on Sullinger, a dozen points already tonight for Austin Rivers, and many of them in spectacular fashion. The one thing that Ohio State does a good job of, they don't put you on a free throw line. Duke right now, already this year in seven games, has shot 75 more free throws than their opponents. Well, you equate that in seven games, that's 10 more attempts a game. And That's unbelievable. And Doc's kid gets to the line as much as anybody with the speed, the change of direction, the crossover. I think hey, LeBron and D-Wade are sitting down there worrying about keeping up with that quickness in a year or two. Say one thing. Buford, what a touch. Up in town this week. Out of Toledo, man. They've had some great ones. Dennis Hobson, who he's chasing for the all-time record, is also from Toledo. Jimmy Jackson was one of my favorites. Plumlee draws the double team. How about the pressure D again? They double up inside. You gotta recognize that open man. You gotta recognize that open man. Take a look at Buford. They're gonna reverse the ball. Nice curl move. Squares his body really well. Plenty of action from this the Big Ten ACC Challenge ahead tomorrow night. We'll preview those games and recap tonight's Michigan in a test against Virginia. Would they lose for the first time? And Jim Beheim faces questions after his team's victorious on the court. Questions having to do with what's going on off the court. On the all right, Carl, thank you. Back here in Columbus, Ohio State up a dozen. There's former Buckeye Greg Oden looking on. Of course, was here for one year. Uh, Ohio State making it to the national championship game in his one and only season as a Buckeye. A comparison of what Oden did as a freshman to what Sullinger did last year as a freshman. Different kinds of players, obviously. Oden much more of a defensive player. Sullinger much more refined at the offensive end at a young age. And look at Duco in zone here. You don't see this very much. You don't. It's really surprised. Playing an active zone right now, trying to protect players. Going to make them shoot that perimeter shot. Buford does, but he misses. The rebound ripped down by Mason Plumley. So I think it changes the little rhythm of the game. I think that's a good decision right there. Rivers. Thornton open for three. And airballed it, but it's off Sullinger out of bounds. See, that's the one area they want him to work on. They want Doc to work on. I keep calling him Doc. But they want him right now, Austin, to be able to penetrate and find open people. He found the open court there, but it didn't go down. Now he's got a wide open three. He hesitated. He Too hesitated. Open. Yeah, he never shot that in rhythm. You're right, Kraft always appears to be under control out there. Wide open look, Thomas. Created by Kraft. Kraft is your prototype point guard. He thinks pass first. How's this for an academic record? Told me before the game, he said, Dickie B, I got my first B in my life last year and I should have had an A but I got a B in chemistry <laughs> it's only B I'm going to celebrate it for three months if I got a B <laughs> Thornton from the corner not shy to try another one after just airballing one but he missed again even though he made those two against Kansas they will let him shoot the three even though he knocked those two big ones down view for the big score so far for Ohio State with 13 Sellinger's got 12 Rivers leads Duke with 13 Blue Devils in the zone again Got to get in the gap of that zone. See right there behind the foul line area is a wide open scene. There it is. Look, there Thomas it is. from Sullinger. Right behind the foul line area was an open scene. They recognized it and they got themselves a deuce. How about the pass from the big guy Sullinger? Great look. Thomas has terrific squad ability. He has to understand more than a good shot is. 13 to 3 run Ohio State. Good Thornton time. battling for it. Still loose. Finally a hell of a ball. The arrow will keep it with Duke. See some no similarities in Kraft and Greg Paulus. Both were quarterbacks. Both were winners. Let's look at that, Mata. 
Thursday night, the Big East SEC Challenge begins with a doubleheader on ESPN2 at 7.30 Eastern. It'll be St. John's against the new number one Kentucky. Then at 9.30, Georgetown taking on a very good Alabama team. The Hoyas playing very well in the early going of the season as well. Great night of hoops. Mr. Schumann, I'm yes, going to ask you a question. Yes, I need sir. your help. Yes, sir. How does the team, yeah. they have one loss, Georgetown. They beat Memphis head-to-head -head on a neutral floor. Memphis has two losses, yet Memphis is rated nationally in there now. Figure ask, that out. Ask the coaches, man. It's the coaches uh, voting. I mean, do they really pay attention to what's happening? Curry. Curry banked that in somehow from the corner. You know, I just find that not logical. If I beat yep. you on a neutral and I even have a better record than you, how are you right that I'm not? You know, Georgetown kind of an unknown commodity coming into the season. How good would they be? But they're off to a good start. Yeah, Jerry Clark will shoot the ball. Crap the floater. Kelly might have gotten a piece. Thomas the putback. He is showing his prolific scoring ability. Three Buckeyes in double figures already tonight. Buford, Sullinger, and Thomas. And really playing aggressively defensively. That Mata, every year he's been a head coach, has won 20 or more games. Every year. Yep. You get the feeling here in Columbus, kind of a sense of unfinished business. Made it to the national championship game a few years ago. Last year had a dynamite team. Won 34 games. Lost in the Sweet 16 to Kentucky. But he's got the talent for another deep, deep run. Well, you think about all the players they've lost early over yeah. the years. Unbelievable. Here comes Curry. The kick to Quinn Cook and another air ball from three-point land for the Blue Devils. Well, really, the wrong people are shooting threes. Guys like Cook, Thornton. I know Thornton made those two, but that's not his strength. His strength is defense, energy, toughness. A 17-point lead for Ohio State after Duke had gotten it down to one on a couple of occasions. Kraft still going. It will stay at this end of the floor, and Ohio State can hold for the final shot. Tell you one thing, Sullivan's just got great hands inside, but if you had a grade that for their first half performance, that modest kid, look at that, that's going loud there. He wants a timeout, set up the last shot. You would have, you should have heard the beautiful speech that Sullinger gave at the Wayman Tisdale. I'm sure. They couldn't yeah. pick a better person Quality kid. in the first year of the Wayman Tisdale Award to represent it because he had all the qualities that Wayman possessed. Just a terrific human being. Really super person. I really absolutely, I, I was thrilled to be at that bank with, 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 with Mr. Sullinger. You know, and so often, players like Sullinger play one year go to the NBA we don't know yet if that's going to change once everything comes out of the new collective bargaining agreement but how great is it for the college game this year to see some of the freshmen like Sullinger who came back for their sophomore well, season? well also you go that at North Carolina Harrison Barnes yeah. came back Perry Jones it looks like they got something special going on up in Baylor those are great factors but in the Big Ten I'm gonna tell you a team nobody's talking about Northwestern Watch the kid, John Scherner. He's going to be one of the better players in the Big Ten. Had 25 tonight. They beat they beat uh, Georgia Tech today. Win. And yep. also Virginia had a great win over Michigan. Trey Burke, by the way, the outstanding freshman, he played with Sullinger in high school. We'll have uh, a game day game from Ann Arbor in February. Ohio State at Michigan. Shot clock turned off. He's going to try to get a little penetration and dump it off to Sullinger. Graf defended by Rivers. Squishy in the roll, he'll release to the goal. He's going to release to the goal. They're going to dump it inside the cellar. Buford fouled before the shot. And that's just the sixth team foul on Duke. Neither team over the limit. Not many fouls considering the intensity and the pace of the first half. So it'll be Ohio State ball. Less than three seconds to go. You know, Ohio State does a great job in that area. Don't put it in the free throw line. Valparaiso only went on the line twice. And that's one of Duke's strengths. Get to the line. But tonight they're not getting to the line. Thornton in for Curry. Kraft to inbound it for the Buckeyes. Thornton brought in for defensive purposes. Thomas, a good look. The Shooters get the break. What a half. An incredible first half by the Buckeyes. They were absolutely super scintillating. Sensational, Mr. Phelps. Three Buckeyes in double figures at the end of the first half. Thomas, Buford, Sullinger. 19-point lead for the Buckeyes as we join Carl Ravitch, Digger Phelps, and Hubert Davis in the studio with the UPS Halftime Report. 
The home court or not, the intensity favoring Ohio State, the balance scoring favoring Ohio State, a 47-28 advantage over Duke. They started out with that great run. Duke seemed to neutralize it, and then all of a sudden they get uh, a roundhouse right again, Hubert. Well, Ohio State, one of the things that really impresses me, they're outstanding defensively, and they're able to play defense without fouling. I mean, Duke is a team that gets to the free throw line 28 times. They only have three free throw attempts in the first half. Um, also, Aaron Kraft at the point guard position. I really like the way that he's playing on the offensive end. He's taking care of the basketball. He's being aggressive. They're giving him the threes, taking it. He's penetrating, getting into the lane, and finding guys like William Buford and Deshaun right. Thomas out there on the wing and down low. But in the second half, Ohio State's going to have to knock down some jump shots. It can't be just Jared Sullinger. Remember last year, one of their strengths was shooting the ball from three. Only 31% this year. Somebody's going to have to step up in order to continue the way that they've been playing in the first half. But the key to this game to me in that first half was Jared Sullinger. He just came right out and dominated inside. And once you do that, and you got a guy like this going inside, getting points in the paint, and even later when Duke went zone, he knew how to score and making things happen as far as an assist to Thomas one time, himself inside the paint making things happen as far as being open, but being strong, and yeah, getting Plumley on the bench with two fouls with eight minutes to go in that first half, another factor. But when you look at how Sollinger dominates, that allows the other guys, and you see the balance scoring, and even when they try to zone, there he is inside, bounce pass, assist, layup. This is what makes him so strong to me, is that he can dominate inside, outside, and he's the key factor. He's like a point guard in the paint, the way he gets the ball and scores or dishes it. You're right about Kraft. He's a leader of this team. Duke is struggling, and I think Dawkins and Curry got to find some perimeter games. Austin Rivers is the most fun to watch individually. I mean, he's had some incredible moves here. They're going to need more offense. They're one of seven from three-point land, 12-27 in this half. They haven't given up this many points in a half, obviously, this season. 79 points in a game, and already Ohio State's got four. Welcome back to the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods. We're in Columbus, Ohio. The Buckeyes started the game on an 11 to nothing run, ended the half on an 11 to two run. They're up 19 on Duke. As we get ready for the second half, the Big Ten currently leading the challenge 2-1. to one. Hi again, everybody. Dan Schumann and Dick Vitale. What an impressive performance by the Buckeyes inside and outside of the first half. Yeah, they did everything right. They were absolutely sensational defensively, offensively. Jared Sullinger, we expected him to be a force, and he hasn't disappointed. The All-American has shown that great strength, touch, very physical, and really attacked the basket. Kraft loved this kid. Very, very bright. Straight-A student, man. He was a valedictorian in high school. And tonight he's been a valedictorian at the point. Inside, Lovely had some trouble right there as they doubled up on a post. And you look at Duke as you see Ohio State right there. Sullinger and Kraft really played well. Really a dominant performance by Ohio State in the first half. We are underway in the second half. Kraft and the Buckeyes get the first possession. You know, dude, Rivers and Plumlee, 21 in their points. The rest of the team only had seven. Duke comes up with an early turnover. Very few fouls in the first half. A very intense, fast-paced game, but dominated for the most part by the Buckeyes, who shot over 60% in the first half. You know, scouting report certainly on Duke is control their three-point shooting. And one way to do it, you better have athletes that can challenge your shooters. And Ohio State has done a phenomenal job containing their three-point shooters. Another Buckeye turnover. Duke just one for seven from three-point range. And Ryan Kelly scoreless in this game as Plumley is held and finishes strong. The foul on Lenzel Smith Jr. Mason Plumley into double figures now with ten. Duke shooting one. Second foul on Smith. Mason Plumley and Austin Rivers doing almost all of the scoring for the Blue Devils in the first half. See, they don't have the kind of club as they had in the past. They can go get you full court and pressure. They don't possess those kind of athletes. They have to do it methodically. Like that word? Makes I like that. That's a, a good word. <laughs> number 20, Andre, Dawkins. Andre Dawkins picks up the foul. His first, his first. first on him.
The starters for Ohio State playing 87 of a possible 100 minutes in the first half, including Thomas, who scored the last nine points of the first half for the Buckeyes and the first three here in the second. You know, last year he had a couple of good moments. There's one specific when he went on an unbelievable spurt against Illinois, the spark of the win, but he was really a disappointment, I thought, last season based Very on street. his reputation. Curry for three, in and out. He's got great reach when you look at Sullinger, but he also possesses terrific hands. Craft into Sullinger. And a steal by Dawkins. Can he keep it in bounds? Only for a moment. It's back over to Ohio State, and Mike Krzyzewski is going to make an early substitution here in the second half with Thomas lighting it up from the outside. Kelly's going to go out. Going to watch the catch right here. Craft. Whips it to the hot guys. My buddy Dan just told you the last nine and a half. And there he is showing why he was the third leading scorer in the history of Indiana basketball. That's saying a lot, man. There's some great players in Indiana basketball. Kraft misses the 15-footer. Hairston into the game for Kelly to try to put the clamps on Thomas, who has scored the last 12 Buckeye points. They got to get some shots for Rivers, get him a little bit offensively going. See, Duke has to get their points off plays, off action patterns. Mike told us that before the game. Here's Rivers with a floater. That goes in and out. Rivers follows up, and that won't stay down. Two great effort, efforts by Rivers, and he comes up empty. I'm impressed with the defensive effort of Ohio State, the way they challenged on the perimeter. Kraft guarding Curry most of the night has held him to a quiet four. Buford a big first half with 13. That's the yield man, man. He locks you up. Smith for three. Yeah, They're all feeling it. They're all feeling it. That might have said, who said this is a football school, man? This is basketball. I never could buy that argument. To me, why can't you have football and basketball? You can have both. That's the Gators. They had it. The Ohio State Buckeyes have won 28 in a row at home. Going back several years, the Duke Blue Devils have won 35 in a row in the month of November. That goes back five years, and they play tough schedules. But to say that streak is in jeopardy would be an understatement. They're down 23 to Ohio State. Hey, Duke's got a few unbelievable streaks going. Rivers again sheds his defender, and the reverse is pretty. He has that terrific first step. He has that incredible first step when he makes that turn on you and he cuts the defense off. Very school. He has almost half of their point stick, 15 of their 32. Sister was a great volleyball player at the University of Florida. Other played at Georgetown in Indiana. Mm -hmm. And Dad Doc, a terrific player at Marquette and in the pros. Didn't have that first step that Austin's got, but a great point guard, terrific defender. Offensive rebound and put back for the unstoppable Deshaun Thomas. I tell you, Deshaun Thomas, this could be a coming out party for him. This could psychologically take him to the level that people anticipated when he was a schoolboy sensation. Plumley lost it on the way up. And a foul going against the Blue Devils. They can't do no wrong. You got to applaud. I tell you, they have been brilliant. Almost in a different style, but almost as brilliant as you and I have in Missouri. Mm -hmm. How brilliant they were. Yep. They did it with the unbelievable perimeter players and the quickness. That Mata said yesterday at practice wasn't so sure if his team was ready for a game like this. Said they're still developing. And as we mentioned earlier, they haven't played away from home yet. They've only played one real high caliber opponent. That was a seven point win over Florida. The Blue Devils certainly have been tested. Held ball, it'll be Duke ball. Tested coming into the game tonight with a trip to New York, a trip to Maui, some high level competition. But tonight, the Buckeyes have more than answered the challenge thus far. Back in Columbus, LeBron Wade supporting Ohio State. Uh, LeBron Wade. I mixed them up. <laughs> I combined them. Imagine LeBron what kind of a player that would be. LeBron James rooting for Ohio State. Dwayne Wade looks like he's in Duke colors. Right now it's LeBron whose team is winning. Tell you what, both guys are Twitter freaks. They're absolutely spent so much time tweeting everybody. Yep. I'll tell you one thing. I think they're going to have a dynamite year this year. I think Pat Riley will get them to finish in pieces. 
How about Deshaun Thomas of the night he's having? He's on the brink of a career high with almost 16 minutes to go. You know, Dan, a game like this can take him to that next level with their anticipation. And you get that third guy to join Buford and certainly Sullinger. That's a big, that's a nice play. That's a big advantage. Austin Rivers having a terrific night, finds Mason Plumley. They're the only two guys who are doing any scoring right now. They've got 27 of the 34. Ryan Kelly, no points. Andre Dawkins, no points tonight. Curry, two for five. Really struggling. Michael Benege into the game, number 13 for Duke, defending Buford. First time we have seen Benege tonight, a freshman out of Chester, Virginia. Benege is a defensive player. He's long, he's lean. He's an active player. He's got to work a little bit more in his offensive game. There's that big screen. Perhaps that's seven assists already. Are you kidding me? He banged that off the glass. But Randall, we go nuts and bank it off the glass, baby. He's smiling. He knows I didn't really, I didn't plan that. But I'll take it. It looks good at a box score tomorrow. What a night. Ten points and seven assists already for the sophomore who plays the game with as much energy and enthusiasm as any player you'll see on the collegiate level. You know, on December 9th, if they get the kid Ross back in there too, to give him a little more flexibility, everybody says he's an outstanding wing player from out of Jackson, Mississippi. Big Ten will be interesting this year. I mean, Wisconsin will be very good, especially in Madison. Tomorrow night, though, North Carolina should have a little chip on their shoulder. They think Harrison Barnes is going to play despite that ankle injury. And they should be a little angry team. They got a date on the road Saturday with Kentucky. We'll be at Kentucky Thursday. Upsells. Miles Plumley with a slam. Austin Rivers twice in the last couple of minutes has penetrated and then kicked to the cutting big man. And that was really the conversation we had today with Mike Shashevsky. When he adds that part of his game, finding other people, he's going to elevate himself. Found Mason Plumley once, found Miles Plumley once. Three assists on the night for Rivers. Buford to a cutting Sullinger. And here come the Blue Devils. Nice cut. He normally finishes that play. Good movement without the ball. Boy, Rivers just shedding defenders like crazy. Misses the shot and then fouls Kraft. The one area he's got to work on, though, is playing without the ball. How to get free without the ball. So many players who are great stars in high school can play with the ball on a bounce, but they can't play without it. Here he is going to try to go to one-on-one. -on -one. He shakes him. Comes up short on the shot. Then he fouls. Thomas again. And Miles Plumley the rebound for Duke. I think that Mata can't believe seeing the margin, the difference in there. Curry being hounded by Kraft again. And finally a reach and foul. Talk about a family. His dad and Stefan. Certainly great players. Mike Shashevsky having words with one of the officials, Terry Weimer, Ted Valentine, also involved. Number four, Aaron Kraft, is first seed center. And Aaron Kraft, he'll, he'll get into a defender. He is a relentless defender. Did get a foul called on him right there. A three for Curry. And boy, did Duke need that. Hey, that's his expertise. He has that terrific range, can shoot it. The whole family can shoot it. From the dad, his brother. Shooting the three can get you back in the game if you can get good looks. Sullinger, Mason Plumley got a piece coming over to help. Ohio State ball, 20 to shoot. Duke's got to find a way to get the three point shooters to stop really getting on fire. Just two for nine on the night. One of them by Rivers, one of them by Curry. Shooting 46% for the year. That's remarkable. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's early in the season, but that's still a remarkable number. And then on a blowout, you know, they had really a lot of tough games. Banerjee knocks it away. And we'll finish with the layup. A little spark here for the Blue Devils. Banerjee gives him that little quickness. Gives him a little defensive effort. If you're Ohio State right now, you're that model. You got to be careful. Your kids lose focus and get away from doing all the good things. Look at this sloppy pass. Ohio State gets it back. Kraft 
somehow the ball bounces right back to him and he lays it in. It's one of those nights for him. He banks one off the glass, the ball bounces back to him. And the nut house goes bananas. Yesterday, Urban Meyer becomes the head football coach. Tonight, they host Duke, and they're up 19 in the second half. He was the perfect choice for the job. Coming back home. Rivers, another nice pass and a foul underneath. He will do a phenomenal job here. There's no doubt with their resources that he will be able to get them in a winner's circle. Follow the bouncing this. ball here. Now look, it's going to bounce right back. You get an assist. I mean, he said once in all, he gets an assist for that. Can you get an assist on your yeah. own basket? <laughs> you know, I'll mention it Meyer again. They go 6-6 six and six the team this year. I firmly believe, and nothing taken away from Luke Fickle. He came from a tough situation and was in a tough environment. I really believe that Meyer's motivational ability would have been a difference of three games. They would have won nine games. Now you've got Kirk Herbstreit is here talking to him before the game. He says there's no doubt that uh, they will win here in Ohio State. Kirk does a great job yep. with Brett Musburger. Terrific listen. Mason Plumley way out on the perimeter, getting stuck with Buford, who goes around him and banks it in. What a play. He took advantage of his quickness yeah. against size. You had quickness isolated against size, and he like, he's a prolific scorer. He has a really legit shot at catching that record. What noise here in Columbus. They have a lot to cheer about. This is a legitimate big-time team. He's They're going to be tough to beat in the Big Ten. I know Wisconsin's pretty good. You think about certainly Michigan State going to get better and better. Michigan got beat today. Look at the quickness. Says, can't play me one-on-one. -on -one. That's the first step. And pulls up, makes the nice little jumper off the glass. Tomorrow night, the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods continues with a couple of games here on ESPN beginning at 7.30 Eastern. Florida State and Michigan State then 9.30. A top ten matchup between Wisconsin and North Carolina. What a night of hoops it should be. Tonight here in Columbus, this game is so big, it brought out LeBron James and Dwayne Wade showing off their arms, throwing T-shirts into the crowd, signing autographs. And having a good old time sitting on the baseline right under one of the baskets and coming over to say how to Dickie V at the last time out. It was great seeing those two guys, two sensational players. And we asked, we knew LeBron from his clothing and his tweets. We knew LeBron was rooting for Ohio State, but we asked Dwayne Wade, are you rooting for Duke? And he said, yeah, and here's why. Tom Crean, his coach of Marquette, now a Big Ten coach, Indiana. So he says, you know, he can't, he can't vote for another Big Ten team. So, so he's rooting for Duke right now. Tell you one thing, I'll have a lot to cheer about with Marquette. Buzz Williams got a good basketball yep. team. We'll see them in the Jimmy V. Class That's right. Against Washington. Good matchup. Also, Villanova and Missourian, which should be a very good game. Coming up uh, December the 6th, two weeks from tonight. One week from tonight, excuse me, in New York. How good is St. Louis? They beat Villanova, and then they won that tournament. You, and I'll give you this. You've been on that bandwagon for a while. Oh, You're liking that team. I really do. Yeah. I think Rick Majerus has got a healthy team. He's healthy. He's doing a good job with that basketball team. Curry for three. Miles Plumley, strong rebound, and he's fouled. Duke starting to score a little bit. Can they get stops? You know, I think right now the danger for Ohio State is playing a little casual, play the scoreboard, and not really do all the things that got you that major lead. Start to get a little bit looser, let the three-point shooters get squared up. There's Miles Plumley at the line. He's getting more and more minutes and playing well. Mason's having a great game. Again, Ryan Kelly has not been the well, fact that tonight that he's been all season long. Yeah, yep. what about Dawkins? Yep. His shooting ability. Neither guy has been able to perform. And neither guy's been in the game for quite a while here in the second half. We're here with the Value City Arena, the home of the Ohio State Buckeyes, the second-ranked team in the nation. Dan Schulman to Dick Vitale with you. All Buckeyes just about the entire night. A 20-point lead on Duke. Sullinger inside and a foul. You know, they've been dominating everybody by better than 30 points other than Florida. The Gators came here and really challenged them. I mean, it was a good basketball game. Congratulations, by the way, to Billy Donovan won his 400th game. They got a diaper dandy that is special. And Bradley Beal. 
Great backcourt. Great group of guards they've got down there. Kid Patrick Young, really strong, physical. He's going to get better and better. Sullinger with a nice stroke at the line. He's shooting 85% on the season from the free throw line, and the big guy gets to the line a lot. And that's a big plus. Mike Krzyzewski said it's great when you got a big guy who's going to get to the line and then convert because there are a lot of big guys out there can't make free throws. Yep. Great put form, great line. backspin. Yeah, great rotation. He was well coached. His dad was an outstanding high school coach. And is here as always. Yep, Satch. Here comes Rivers. He's got a variety of moves, man. He's got more moves than Baskin Robbins has flavors. <laughs> I mean, he's got a variety of moves. That's the second foul on Seibert, the seventh team foul, so one and one coming for Rivers. The one area, as I said earlier, he's got to work on. Here he is. He can get his shot off the bounce. He's the one Duke player on the perimeter that can, but he's going to have to learn how to play a little bit more without the basketball. And another guy who's going to get to the line a lot. He is a 65% shooter from the free throw line on the season. He can do himself a lot of good by improving that number. And yeah, he will. I think he will as the season goes on. Rebound Kraft. I thought, my friend, we were going to see a mailbox match. I agree. Right down to the line. It has been blowout city. It has been all Buckeyes. Foul Benache. Lenzel Smith Jr. back into the game now for Ohio State. Seibert will sit down. Ohio State has played 10 or 11 players in their blowout wins, but in this game and the game against Florida, they've only, Pat Mata's only played seven. So we'll see over the course of the season if he extends his rotation or just keeps it to his top seven. He's known for not going to the yep. bench quite a bit. You know, I'm really impressed with his staff as well. We know about the Duke staff. We've sung their praises for years with Dave Dickerson and Jeff Bowles and Chris Jenkins. Yes. Yeah. Sollinger. Sollinger again. David Uglehoff does an outstanding job in operations. And Greg Polis handles all their video. Video coordinator, the former Duke guard. Mason Plumley off to Quinn Cook. Would have had the shot blocked, so he tried to feed it in to Benege, who couldn't handle it. Quinn was a terrific high school player. Played at Oak Hill. Duke got a commitment out of a junior. I don't know, Matt Jones, a phenomenal shooter, according to our Paul Dean Cardi of ESPNU. And he said also, tonight, North Carolina got a commitment for 2013 from a kid named Brick from out of Gonzaga. Ravenel. And the rebound down to Mason Plumley. Those guys do a great job, by the way, with ESPNU in the recruiting. They've tied Definitely do, yep. Reggie Rankin, all those guys. Not a lineup you've seen very often from Duke this year. Quinn Cook in the game. Also, Michael Benege in the game. Rivers doing the bulk, bulk of the ball handling. Turns it over. See, he's got to learn to play without the ball. Yep. He controlled the basketball about 15 seconds there, and everybody's standing around taking pictures. Everybody became the Kodak man. Offensive foul on the screen set by Ravenel. That Mata not so sure. Well, look at that intensity. <laughs> now look right here. See, everybody's watching. Everybody's watching all his teammates. He's going to keep the ball. Gonna keep the ball. It's one against four. When he tries to make the pass, they deflect it. He's gonna learn to give the ball, start running some curl moves. I'll tell you, Fat Mott has got to be thrilled with the team defense he's seeing tonight. The Absolutely. intensity and the, the help defense these guys have been giving. And he's also got to be thrilled with the crowd is giving him the big lift. Wow. Hey, it's Jimmy V Week, and I want to tell you this, my friend. We got people in this house that have been so good to the V Foundation, Buckeye lovers and supporters. Bruce Cassidy, Larry Wade, Jim Frauenberg has always been. He's a great Ohio State fan, a big booster. These people have really, really helped us. I think the shot clock did not start when the game clock did, so they're going to look and see what the shot clock should be set to on this possession.
Thursday night, the Big East SEC Challenge begins with a doubleheader on ESPN2 at 7.30 Eastern Time. St. John's will be in Lexington to take on the number one team in the nation, the Kentucky Wildcats, and then a terrific matchup at 9.30, Georgetown and Alabama. Anthony Grant has a very impressive-looking team. Yeah, he really does. he got a couple of great diaper dandies down there as well. Some veterans, obviously. I think of Rutherford and Jermichael Green. But Georgetown, I'm telling you, they're going to be better than people expect. I can't wait to get to Lexington. Too you want to talk about a fan base? Oh, wow. oh boy. <laughs> Big Blue Nation. Yeah. Those passionate fans in all of basketball. They're number one in America. They welcome St. John's and then North Carolina on Saturday. And hey, could yeah. we do this? Is there any chance? We can we do whatever you want. No, no. You know what oh, I was thinking? What? We're doing a game Thursday. Yeah. Can't we just stay in those seats? Can we just stay and Saturday? Don't let, and don't let CBS guys get those seats. <laughs> and we keep those seats for Saturday. That's not day. a bad idea. Uh, I'd like to stay there. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. If we don't move, yeah. they can't get rid of us. Exactly. Hey. Again, the uh, shot clock not running and the game clock not running. So they're going to reset. Both of them took six seconds off the clock. How about a week from Saturday? I know a game that we're both really excited about. We're going to Bloomington, a great place to be. Kentucky at Indiana. What about Indiana right now? They really got their people excited. I know they had to win over Butler, but this is not the same Butler team lost five players from last year. But for Indiana right now, they need some positives, and they're getting positives. It's a long delay to sort out this clock situation. Think about Ohio State, you go back to our buddy Robert Montgomery Knight here. Great teams with Jerry Lucas and company. I still say Lucas to me is the best player ever, Thanks, ever to play at Ohio State. Terry Weimer coming over and uh, clearing it up for us. The clock never started as we mentioned. They took six seconds off it. Put 849 down to 843. Put 35 down to 29. But I think the concern right now is, is the clock working? Will it run? Now maybe it looks like they took one more second off the clock down to 842 and 28. Well, if it's not working, get a manual clock in the sideline. Let's play ball and get this moving. Let's get it moving. We'll step aside while they sort it out. Ohio State in control. Welcome back to Columbus with Dick Vitale. I'm Dan Schulman. Ohio State leading by 23. They're still working on the clock at the moment right here at Value City Arena. What a, a great defensive performance by the Buckeyes tonight. The intensity and the ball pressure. Yeah, number one, they did a great job defending. Number two, they shut down the perimeter shooters. Number three, they were aggressive. And number four, they played defense as a unit. And number five, they were hustling and scrapping and converted off defense to the offensive end. Sullinger having a big night. So's Buford. So's Kraft. So's Thomas. All right, they appear to have the clock fixed now. They've gone to 8:42 and 15. Now, now back to 28. That's where they were when we went to break. 8:42 and 28. And apparently, the officials, there's a remote when they blow the whistle, the clock will automatically stop. But apparently, that it's not is not working. So it's going to be manually started and stopped by the officials across the way from us. You know, I mentioned 1960, they won the national title. Terrific Fred Taylor with that great team, Havlicek and Lucas. Bobby Knight used to get standard ovations when he played. When he would come in for Havlicek with one minute to go. <laughs> 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 no, I'm only teasing Bobby if you're listening. You know, he's coming here. They're having a day for Coach Knight. Wow. Yeah, but a foul before son. the block. Lamar is coming here. Right. Pat Knight, Bob Knight's son. I think it's in a week and a half or so they're coming here. They're going to honor Bob Knight. Foul on Smith. We've well, had some great players in Buckeye Lamb, but I still think Jerry Lucas was the best. Austin Rivers back to the line again for Duke. Let's take a look at who's next, brought to you by Dodge. And who's next right now for the Blue Devils is Austin Rivers, his high school credentials. You saw him play often down in high school. And Mike Krzyzewski says he is doing very well. He's happy with his progress, but that still he has things to learn about a, the game at this level, both offensively and defensively. He's only played seven games. Yeah. This is, I think, his eighth game, and people have to understand. He's done really well getting adjusted to academics as well. The school is competitive as Duke. Uh, he's been a star tonight. Mr. Kraft has been a star tonight. He started the game off in star fashion, making a big three, attacking the rim, defending. A block by Ravenel. 
Davido gives him some good minutes off the bench. Sure has. Came from Boston College, where they're in a real struggle down at BC. They're a very athletic team, these Buckeyes. They really are. Very athletic, yeah. and they could also shoot the ball. They got different weapons. They got inside outside play and the combination of Buford and Sullinger is as good as you're gonna find in America. Hairston open inside the arc, knocks down the jumper. Okay. Hairston, Cook, and Benege, who would be players eight, nine, and ten, really, according to minutes in the Duke rotation, all getting significant minutes tonight because it just hasn't worked out for the other guys. They're getting quality minutes right now. And you know, I look at Kraft. And I think about it, if you're going to win a national title, he becomes a very important player. Nice pass by Kraft. Oh, that's just terrific inside play. Share the basketball. Be unselfish. Find the open man. That's really a coach's dream. Perfect execution. Leads to efficiency. Cook finds Plumley for the slam. Plumley's going to have a good year this year. No question. Stronger, more confident. You know, you don't want to make excuses that Mike sold us before the game. We're not making, we're fresh. I don't want to hear it because I brought up about you guys coming from Hawaii. When you get back Friday, good practice a little bit on Sunday. You said, hey, no, we're ready. I like that. I don't like coach the line and cry and make excuses. This has just been a great performance. Look at him share that ball. Are you kidding me? That's a clinic. That is a coach's clinic. Reverse the ball, make the extra pass, and then convert and make the shot. This team could not play better than what they're playing tonight, Dan Schumann. <laughs> Harrison with another long jumper. It's a two. Harrison saying, hey, Coach, give me more PT. The book says I defend and rebound. I can make shots. A 23-point lead for the Buckeyes. Four players with at least 15 points for Ohio State. Kraft, Sullinger, Thomas, Buford. It's been all Ohio State. Duke has never really been in this game. Fade away by Buford. Sullinger the save, but into the hands of Benege. Duke on the run. Cook has it stripped. What a play by Kraft. But then he led Sullinger just a hair too far. Sullinger should have made like Antonio Gates, former basketball player, now a football star. And catch that baby. It's a tight end. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And in part by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Big Ten ACC Challenge. Robbie Hummel, veteran of these. Purdue up seven. They'll win 76-65 as he hits the jumper from the wing. So far, the Big Ten uh, having its way with the ACC, and obviously that's happening in the game we're watching. Three and one to this point, and the uh, Maryland victory, I should say, not the Maryland, the Ohio State victory, will make it four to one. Hi, right, Carl, thank you. There you see the latest updates from the Big Ten ACC Challenge with the Big Ten now leading three to two, and Ohio State well on its way to a win here tonight in Columbus, leading Duke by 23 the worst loss that a Duke team has ever suffered to a Big Ten team this predates Mike Krzyzewski by a significant margin 1958 when they lost to Michigan State 82 to 57 by 25 points Ohio State led the game 11 to nothing closed the first half on an 11 2 run and have not been threatened at all in the second half as Sullinger Fouls Mason Plumley. Plumley and Rivers have 31 of the 50 Duke points. Meanwhile, Dick for Ohio State, Kraft has played the whole game. Buford has played the whole game. And Sullinger just came out for one minute. Those three guys have been dominant tonight. Tell you one thing, they earned their scholarships. I'll tell you that during the course of the year. Illinois, by the way, is undefeated right now. Haven't lost. Northwestern hasn't lost. The guy that really impressed me tonight, watching his ability last year, this year, Kraft. He has really taken his game up a big notch. Mason Plumley, one of two. 
Mike Krzyzewski stays with Hairston, Benajay, and Cook. The only true regulars who are in there right now are Rivers and Mason Plumley. Guys like Kelly, Dawkins have not been much of a factor. They've been on the bench almost the whole second half. You know it's going to be a written match up when Kansas plays Ohio State. Robinson and Sullinger on the inside. You talk about strength. Kraft, you talk about strength. Sullinger with the finish and another assist for Kraft, his eighth. The key against Duke, we said at the top of the show, and it's been evident here, and that's why they're struggling. You have to contain their freeze, and they have done a phenomenal job, and I think a two for 11. That's right. right. Whereas two Ohio for State is seven for 13, and they have not been a great three point shooting team this year. Quinn Cook with a basket for Duke. And the reason that they're 7 to 13 is the ball reversal getting you the extra shot. So many kids don't understand. If you make the extra pass, you're going to get a better shot. Off the fingertips of Sullinger to the Blue Devils. Rivers with a deep three. Wow. You talk about range. You talk about range. He shot that from Cincinnati, man. He shot that from Marty Brenneman's house. He shot that from Cincinnati. 20 now for the freshman Rivers. Look at Doc smiling. He said, I couldn't shoot like that. I could shoot thumbs up. He goes, I could shoot like that. How about the unselfish, unselfishness of the Buckeyes, specifically Kraft, all night long? Well, there he is, penetrating. He loves this little bounce pass. Very simple. They have a little triangle form. They have a triangle. Two guys on the box. He bounces the ball. See, two guys down on the box, and then he just drops the bounce pass. The little dime, as Clark Kellogg would say, a former mm -hmm. great offensive rebounder for the Buckeyes. He gives that mouth guard a workout during the game, doesn't he? Yeah. He's chewing on it more than he's got it in his mouth. You know, I mentioned Toledo with Buford and thinking of Hobson and Jimmy Jackson. There was another great kid that came out of uh, Toledo for Ohio State, Kelvin Rams. Played with uh, played with Clark Kellogg. Clark's a terrific human being, great humanitarian as well as a first-class guy. You have a microphone. Into the final four minutes here in Columbus, all Ohio State almost all night long. Is Buford couldn't keep his feet and turns it over. He finally did something wrong. He finally did something wrong, Mr. Buford. The under four media timeout here in Columbus. They have been having a good old time here at Value City Arena tonight with the Buckeyes up big on Duke. I'm Linda Cohn, Sports center after the game Syracuse back on the court for the first time since Bernie Fine was fired Jim Beheim speaks out Bobby Valentine the new manager in Boston is he the right fit and does Sue's punishment fit the crime all that after Duke Ohio State Evan Turner Mike Connolly former Buckeyes under Thad Mata part of some very good teams here in Columbus they can appreciate sharing the basketball both of those guys terrific passers and boy has Ohio State shared it nicely tonight they really do a great job with placement of the big people down on a low box they find them and they get the guy that can square his body guy squared his body down in the post a great job let's just little drop pass pass uh, just terrific interior passing there's a little skip pass penetration drop the bounce pass two guys they place two guys on the boxes and they rely on the penetration rivers misses the three hairston is there for the putback hairston. rivers by the way has tied his season high with 20 aaron pratt is too shy of his career high he's got 17 right now if i gave the mvp tonight it would be Kraft. defensively offensively he set the whole tone for the night thomas is fouled by hairston i tell you it's great when you got a superstar that is the kind of person as Sullinger. it really flicks everybody yep. on the team he's just a class kid well you watch him in practice and you see the body language that guys like Sullinger and kraft have in practice how how into what they are how intense they are the leadership qualities they have even though they're both just sophomores you get good kids man that's what makes it fun to coach too yep. They've got a senior in Buford, but other than that, Ohio State is an extremely young team. This is really a sophomore-driven group other than Buford. Cook for three. Ooh, 
And down hard goes Smith. Lenzel Smith Jr. hitting the court hard. To foul on number 15, Josh Harrison. Harrison called for the foul. Bonus. A kid that plays really hard, doesn't get a lot of recognition. Smith's a defensive guy, won the starting berth because of his defensive ability. Stepping in for the minutes of guys like Lighty and Diebler from a year ago. Here it is. <laughs> Tried to brace his fall, it looked like, with his left arm. Wow. You mentioned Lighty. Lighty was a terrific defensive player, and they were hoping Smith would hope to minimize that loss mm -hmm. defensively. Or maybe just had the wind knocked out of him. Hopefully not serious. So difficult to project for more seed here. We're not certainly medical people to tell you the extent of an injury. Replaces Lenzel Smith. Seibert is going to take the place of Smith. There are free throws coming. It's one and one. The foul is the seventh on Duke as Smith has helped back to his feet. And great to see him walking off the court under his own power. So you need guys like this on your team that understand their roles, defend, play hard. Can't everybody want to shoot the basketball? This was a hard landing. Jared Sullinger at the line for Ohio State to shoot the free throws. One and one. And it will be Sullinger taking the free throws in place of Smith. Pretty good shooter on that free throw line. He's approaching 90%. That's a rarity for mm -hmm. a big guy. Smith walking slowly down to the end of the bench. One of two for Sullinger. You notice Duke's not getting anything in transition. Yep. Everything has to come off a set five on five. Very little going to come off a. Or Rivers trying to break break the defense down. Oh. Little strong. Rebound and a nice look ahead. Cyber Buford. Lays it in. Nobody got back defensively. They had a poor rotation to give them any kind of balance. Rivers went to the goal and nobody rotated back to protect the best. This is not only a tremendously talented team, but a very athletic team that Ohio State has. And that's one of the negatives we do. They're not very athletic. Mason Plumley the foul. They're basketball players, but they're not what you would call a team filled with athletes. Tomorrow night, the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods continues with two games on ESPN. At 7.30, Florida State, Michigan State at 9.30, Wisconsin in Chapel Hill to take on North Carolina. The starters are going out now for the Buckeyes. And huge ovations for Aaron Kraft and Jared Sullinger. Jared Sullinger last year, the diaper dandy of the year, the recipient of the Wayman Tisdale Award. Who will be that winner this year? It's a special banquet. Austin Rivers will be right in that mix. Quincy Miller down at Baylor's having a great freshman year. Andre Drummond before it's all over. I saw glimpses of him. Yeah. The kid of Connecticut. What a talent he is. Anthony, He's just learning how to play. Anthony Davis at Kentucky, who we'll see on Thursday night. What a job by the starters. Gobbled up almost all the minutes. That might have just going a little bit deeper into his bench right now and look at what these four guys is combined with these are the four who were mainstays last year and this year everybody else basically is new in terms of being a regular player for Ohio State and they combined for 73 points tonight making them nuts here in Columbus the Nuthouse was going bananas but it's really all created off Sullinger he sets the tone in the middle and oh 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 there you are there's the banquet you're talking about the Wayman Tisdale award you got a humanitarian award 
And Jared Sullinger, honored last year as the freshman of the year. He said to me at that when I said, who do you think is going to be here in your seat next year? You want to know what he said? Mm. He said, Anthony Davis yeah, of Kentucky. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. I think he knows his basketball. I can't wait to see the Davis and Jones. And I, I have no problem, by the way, with the goggles three. I have a problem with flexing and posing. What about you, Mr. Schmidt? I agree 100 <laughs> percent. You and I come from the same school. And timeout on the floor with a minute 48 to go. What a terrific performance mm -hmm. we witnessed today. For a team that has played every game at home and had only played one real top caliber team in Florida, there was still a little bit of an unknown about this Ohio State team against a Duke team that has played a very tough schedule so far. But to say the Buckeyes responded would be an understatement, Dickie wait, V. Wait, wait, I'm going to get my guy, put him on a spot. He always puts me on a spot. Are you ready? I really don't I like the sound. I, I really don't like the sounds I'm of this. Gonna, I'm yeah. going to put my guy, put right, my guy right. on a spot. I am. All right. We've seen Carolina. We've seen Kentucky. We've seen Duke. We've seen Ohio State. Who do you like, baby? Who's the best team? Who have you seen that's really impressed in the moment? This is the most impressive performance we have seen this year, don't you think? Yeah, I would agree. I would agree because of the quality of competition yep. that it's against. Yep. I would have to agree based on this. You know, St. John's got some good young kids that will go down here. Unfortunately, not that we know Coach Steve Lavin will not make the trip. Uh, uh, Look at the smile on Buford's face. He's going to put a smile on some NBA's coach. Guys say, well, he's going to handle better. He's going to get stronger. There's a room in the game for guys that can make shots. 20 now for Buford. Rebound down to Cook, and he'll put it back for the Blue Devils as we near the final minute of an extremely impressive performance. More subs now. For Thad Mata, J.D. Weatherspoon, I believe, is coming in. Ravenel is going out. Amir Williams, a freshman from Birmingham. Very highly thought of freshman class, but they haven't been a big factor so far this year. Sam Thompson out of Chicago. Buford out to another huge ovation. You know, I talked to Sullinger before the game. And I said, wow, you got this game in Kansas? He said, no. He said, coach made sure after Duke, we got another game in there. Texas San Antonio. See, Pan American, Texas Pan American. Texas Pan American, right. Yeah. Texas Pan American. Kids even know we're coaching. Hey, you're not going to play Duke in Kansas back to back. One minute, one minute remaining in the game. Final minute. Good guy. I just got a tough one. Wisconsin. That'll be a good game tomorrow. Put up Musburger and Jay Billis on it. Strong finish by Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon played in high school with Sullinger and Trey Burke out of Michigan. Right here in Columbus. Northland High School. Yep. The guys on the court right now are part of the not too distant future for Ohio State. Most of the freshmen are in the game right now, very talented, but as Rivers gets two more. Shannon Scott. Name very familiar to North Carolina fans. Mm -hmm. His daddy was a flat out superstar, Charlie Scott. Just a couple of seconds, three seconds between the game clock and the shot clock. It's been all Ohio yep. State. The Buckeyes have been absolutely brilliant tonight. Led wire to wire. Duke got it within one on a couple of occasions in the first half, but too much Kraft, too much Buford, too much Thomas. Too much Sullinger. I guess they passed the test. And this was not basket weaving tonight. <laughs> tonight was chemistry. And remember, Kraft got his only B in his life. He got into chemistry. Well, tonight he gets an A plus, man. He puts down on his resume. Duke equals A plus. Aaron Brown. Ohio State's home court winning streak continues. It'll be up to 29. Cyber for the jumper. What a masterful performance. They just put a terrific, terrific performance here tonight. On their feet in Columbus as Ohio State dismantles Duke here tonight. An outstanding performance by the Buckeyes. Jared Sullinger and company beat Duke 85 to 63. The Big Ten now leads the ACC 4 to 2 in the challenge.
Coming up next on ESPN at Sports Center. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Dick Vitale and our entire crew, I'm Dan Schulman saying thanks for watching and so long from Value City Arena in Columbus, Ohio.